Hello, everybody. How's it going? Hi. What's up? Hello, hello. Okay, so I just want to make sure we're all good here. So you're showing at the top, dear. So I think we're good to go with okay. that. Anyways, welcome. Hi, thank you. How's it going? It's going so good. So we came on a little bit early because we wanted to make sure that uh, everything was going to work well, and it looks like it is. So um, anyways, let's dive in right away. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Right, 46 people here. This is awesome. Hey. So um, first things first, my name is Blair, a.k.a. Mama B. Everyone, this is Mariah. Um, she runs the page Sex During Corona, which we're all trying to navigate that right now. Um, in very weird ways. So uh, I don't even know how we came across each other. Just one day I started following you on Instagram and then that was it. I was like, okay, this is my people. <laughs> yes, I know. And then we had such a good chat and I was like, oh yeah. my God, I feel like I know you forever. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so we're going to just a little side note because I know a lot of people are probably here because of the draw. Um, so I'm going to be doing a giveaway of um, Tracy's dog, uh, Tracy dog's uh, OG sex toy. So it's a clit sucker with a um, uh, G spot attached to it, which is like an amazing toy. Um, I'll definitely be showing it later today. Uh, all you guys have to do is you have to follow me, you have to follow Mariah, you have to follow Tracy's dog. And if you go to my story right now, there's a question that says, you know what to say. And once you followed all of us, all you have to say is done. That's it. And we'll be doing the draw tonight after the live. So super, super simple. If you guys want to win it, you have to be from either uh, the U.S. or Canada. Um, but yeah, I've got the toy already here. Um, and I'll be sending that out to whoever wins tonight. So that's pretty much it. We're going to jump in. We'll do a little reminder. I'm sure people are going to be asking. So we'll definitely do reminders on that. But uh, anyway, I wanted to just dive right in because I am so excited. Happy Women's Day, by the way. That's Happy so Women's too. Day. <laughs> Um, so why don't you tell me a little bit what like women's day means to you? Ooh, what does women's day mean to me? Well, the first time I ever really experienced it was when I was in Ecuador when I was 20 okay. and everybody was selling flowers on the street and people were just giving it to their moms and their aunts and their friends and their, you know, just like everywhere. And I was just like, wow, yeah. I grew up in the States and I like never really had heard of it, honestly. Yeah. Um, so I feel like it's celebrated a lot in different countries. Um, but it mm -hmm. feels like it's starting to happen here. But it's just, I really feel like it's doing exactly what we're doing. It's just like women empowering other women and lifting each other up and supporting you each bet. other. You bet. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's the most important thing. And I think now more than ever, we've got a really good movement that is happening like worldwide where women are just looking at things a little bit differently and accepting less and expecting more. And that is really what I push is like, stop accepting these kind of behaviors, stop accepting these kind of treatments and start standing up for you and your orgasm and whatever else that might look like. Right. That's true. Um, so yeah, this women's day has been like, this is probably, this one's been more to me than ever before. Like I just, I felt so empowered this morning and so powerful and you know messaging all the messages I was getting from followers and other people like you who I've met and you know been collaborating with and it's been really amazing um but the really real reason that you and I are here and talking today is we're going to talk about our journeys to sexual empowerment because both of us um have been on journey I like to call mine an adventure oh big adventure, <laughs> big adventure. um <laughs> But yeah, I kind of wanted to start off in like the younger, like when you were younger and the whole virginity culture. Um, and so why don't you tell me a little bit about like your introduction to sex and like how you viewed it and, you know, how distorted it was, what you wish you knew, those kind of things. Yeah, um, well, I would say I grew up with a mom who like would leave books outside my door of like what's happening to your body book for girls, you know, and so like I was like she was very like I was very I grew up in a very kind of open um, environment yeah. in terms of that. However, she also was kind of judgmental. So like I was kind of hiding things um, and that's still right. been an issue. Um, so I thought that I would only sleep with somebody unless I was in love with them. Right. Like I was for sure. I was like that. I'm only going to have sex with somebody I'm madly in love with. And so I had a boyfriend in high school. 
um, you know, and we had candles and, you know, did all the things and it was really sweet. Yeah. Then he was like cheating on me the whole rest of high school. But yeah. <laughs> that one moment was good. Um, and so that's kind of what it was for me. I really like had it like this kind of like deep, really, you know, spiritual thing of like having sex and then it totally mm-hmm. changed. Um, I'm curious about yours or yeah so again um very much like you need to be in love you need to you know what i mean you don't want to be having sex with too many people um my sex education class was very male focused like we learned about that men masturbate but they didn't talk about that girls masturbate too meanwhile i'd been masturbating since i was like nine years old um and like yes. understood that there was like something going on down there. Something felt really good. Did I know that it was sexual? No, I had no idea it was sexual back then. But, you know, as I got older, um, but I still felt shame about it. And then um, I was a people pleaser. Uh, I had daddy issues of like abandonment and whatnot. And so like I felt that I had to use the thing that would um, – would get me the attention that I wanted. So I was hypersexual at um, an earlier age. It wasn't sex, but like low jobs. I think I think I gave my I think I gave had the first time when I was like 12 or 13. Um, and then again, I was like instantly labeled that and like, that was, I was getting the attention that I wanted, but I wasn't getting the respect that I wanted, right? And so early on, I, I felt that my body was really the only value that I had to myself. And then when I, quote unquote, devalued myself because I had sex, and um, then at that point, it was kind of like, oh, well, now you're worth nothing. Like, oh, she's had sex. So like, she's not worth being, having you as a girlfriend or whatever, right? Meanwhile, guys were having sex like crazy, and it was like nothing, right? Yeah, and see, and I didn't really have that experience. I mean, I definitely, like, I mean, I remember playing, like, doctor with boys and girls when I was, like, yeah. five and in middle school. And, you know, so I definitely yeah. was, like, exploring and got caught masturbating when I was, like, 12 to, like, Victoria's Secret catalogs by my yeah. sitter. It was horrible. <laughs> um, but I didn't really have that. Like, mm-hmm. I, that's actually, like, from the very beginning, like, I was just, like, wait, if guys can do this, like, I'm going to do this, too. And yeah. so I didn't really have that shame. Like I've never really had it. And I think like, yeah. I've realized like the more I've researched it and studied it and talked to people, like I'm kind of the different one. I'm, I mean, most women especially go through a lot of that shame and I just really haven't. And because of that, like nobody could, nobody could give me shit because I was so open about it and I wasn't yeah. feeling bad. And so they were like, wow. Like, I mean, when yeah. I was a stripper in college, like I was a stripper in college and people would totally be talking about me like oh Mariah strips at that place in Tampa whatever but like I was telling people about it so they couldn't even talk behind my back because I would be exactly well and that's where I'm at now and that's where I've been for you know for a while um the funny comment here one of the guys uh six foot smile says we were not having sex we were making it all up lol well and not gonna comment (laughs) on who that is but anyways Oh, you know him. Um, also, someone asked again how to enter the contest. Again, you just have to follow me, follow Mariah, um, and then follow Tracy's dog and go respond done on my story. You'll see. And it's at Sex During Corona is my. Yeah. 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 Everything's at, up at the top here at the top of the screen. Yeah, You'll see correct. both of ours there. Yeah. Um, Jennifer says, I had to hide my masturbation from everyone, including my parents. Yeah. Hey, I did too. I stole one of my mom's like massager things and was using that thing and it just disappeared. I remember I, uh, it was under my bed and I had some friends over and like someone looked under my bed. They're like, what's that? And I was like, nothing. And they knew what it was. I was like, it's not that it's for massaging your back. It's a back massager. It's like, nah, (laughs) they knew. Um, but, but yeah, like it, I'm, I'm very happy for you that you didn't have to experience that. And that's amazing. And you're like, that's, you're so lucky, but you're right. There, there is a lot of us who didn't, and there's different views of it too. Like, again, I just went full bore. I was like, well, fuck, if they think I'm a slut already, I'm just going to be a slut, like whatever. Like, I don't care. I like sex. And I couldn't yeah. understand why something that felt so good was considered being so bad. Right. Yeah. And then as I got older and out of high school, um, obviously the care of like how, like it didn't matter anymore. Right. It was like, okay, now it's a free for all. Um, but at this point I wasn't having sex for me. I was having sex for the guys. Like I was just having sex for the, like, okay, yeah, let's have sex. Like, was it good? No. Like, I don't, I, I I don't really, there was like one guy that I remember actually like enjoying in like my early twenties. The rest of them were just kind of like, I really like giving head. And so I would just keep doing that. (laughs) Me too. I do too. I do too. I do too. 
Yeah, I mean, I still have that problem where I'm just like, sometimes like I was hooking up with this guy recently, like consistently, and it was so good. And I was like, what have I been doing? Like, and like, it wasn't for attention for me. I think a little bit of it's like power. Like I want to like, yeah. know that I can and I'm going to be like using them the way that they, like there's all these yeah. things, obviously. Um, yeah. But I just was like, wow, like when you have good sex, you're like, what was I doing the rest yes. of the time? Like, what yes. the fuck? Exactly. It was like, what was all that? Like, it was yeah. the same thing the first time I like actually enjoyed getting like I had someone like eat my pussy well. And I was like, oh, this is what they're talking about. Like, yeah. OK, cool. Like, I remember for years I convinced myself I'd say, like, oh, no, I don't like it. Like, it's OK. You don't have to do it. I'll just like, please, let me just like give you head. And it's funny because all of a sudden now there's this big like push of guys that are like, oh, no, no, I do it for my pleasure. And when I started posting videos on TikTok about how like guys, you need to eat pussy more, da, 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 all these guys were kind of like, what are you talking about? We do eat pussy. Girls don't suck dick, blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like, where have you guys been all my life? Like, I feel like it's only been in like the last five years that guys are like open about eating pussy because I, I don't just, remember in my 20s anybody eating pussy. I don't know. I don't know about you. It's just like, you, it's like sucking dick. If you like sucking dick, you're going to be good at it. And I feel like guys, they either like eating pussy and so they do or they don't. And so a lot of guys just don't or something. Or like they don't do it unless you're in a relationship or something. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't understand it. But that's, I don't, I, when a guy says like, I remember this one guy was like, oh, I need to get to know you better to eat your pussy. And I was like, I'm but sorry, yeah, but what? Then we don't talk about, yeah, but then we don't talk about STDs or STIs. So like, you want to get to know me, but why don't we talk about that first? Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, but you want to be like balls deep down my throat or balls deep in my pussy, but like you can't fucking get tongue deep in my puss. Like, get fucking real. Like, that's what, we're not going to do this here. Um, can we just go to a whole other level on that? What about these guys who don't even kiss? Do you know how many fucking guys I've hooked, I've had sex with that we don't even kiss? And half the time, yeah. like, I guess I don't really do it either. But sometimes I want most of the time I want to, and I'm just like, wow, like, I can't believe how much sex I've had and we didn't even kiss. And I'm just like, this is weird. Yeah. Yeah. That one's weird for me too. I haven't, ex I, I used to be like that. Like I did that when I was like younger. Cause I was like, I don't know why I did it. I remember there was a couple guys where I was like, Oh, I don't want to kiss them. I just like, I'm here for one reason and one reason only, but I have had a couple guys who are like that too. Like, like oh, one night like, stands, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And even ones that are like more than once. I'm, and I'm like, okay, like if we're hanging, like if we're fucking more than once, you'd think eventually, but I guess like it's more personal than just like sliding it in. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't get it. I don't understand where the like levels are of like what people are comfortable with and what they're not. Um, I think it's all just a load of bullshit. Like the best sex for me is like no rules, have fun, explore, do whatever, try whatever. Like that's the best sex. When you start limiting what kind of like what you're gonna do and what you're not gonna do, then it's I don't know. It doesn't. It doesn't. It feels so impersonal. Um, yeah. And I'm just. I'm all about like get like having good sex. Like I'm over it. Like I'm done. People tell me people know. people think that I like have so, like, like I would have so much sex and I actually don't because I'm like no I'm I could have more sex but I'm about quality over quantity nowadays. Yeah, and like, that's I where just, I mean that's where you can teach me because I'm like yo my numbers are like I can be random one night all the time but like yeah. really good sex like. I mean, they think, you know, oh, that head was like the most amazing head I've ever had. And I'm like, yeah, but the, for me, like, like, I mean, I dr like drive to somebody's house to like not even come. And I'm like, why am I doing this? Why? Well, well okay. Okay. Number one, we don't drive for dick. Okay. We no longer drive for dick. Dick comes to us. That's my rule. I don't drive to dick unless I don't want someone to know where I live, but I don't drive for dick appointments anymore. I'm done. This, this, this mouth game and this pussy game is too good for that shit. So yes, girl, I'm taking the chance on it. I know it's going to be good for him. Like there without a doubt, yeah, he's going to have, question. that's not even a question. It might be okay for me. We'll see. I'm going to at least be in my own fucking bed and not have to drive. Maybe have an edible or two, maybe have some wine and actually like, try to enjoy myself have my toys at my disposal if i need oh, yeah, them no, that one for sure <laughs> after the sucking clip vibrator thing which is like the demon because it ruined like i mean i used my hand for my whole entire life and now like see, i bought that during quarantine and now it's just like so good that like yeah. i mean i'll bring it out with random dudes because i'm like you're not gonna do anything so let me just yeah. like bust this out real quick yeah, I haven't used my Bombax clit sucker while having sex because I it's actually am scared that I'm not gonna want. Like, I, I, it won't. I won't be able to handle anything else. Like, I'm no, putting I it off. Say, should I put this in my car? Or is that like totally insane? <laughs> 
I have a pocket rocket in my car. Yeah, girl, that's smart. That's smart. Yeah, it has a little. It comes with a little Ziploc case. It's like this big, and it's just in my glove compartment. You just never Amazing. know. Amazing. Um, Miss Angela says, "Happy Win or Women's that's, Day." That's Happy the girl that I go. I just got to shout her out. Real quick. She um did this web series about dating during Corona called Pandemic and Chill TV, and so she oh, airs yeah. an episode every Wednesday, and then we go live after we're talking about it. Um, so that she's this is like her bizarre. amazing. Yeah, she, oh, she, okay, yeah. I'll definitely go follow her if I'm not already. I pretty much follow anybody that you talk to because you're my people. So <laughs> yes. if you're talking to someone, they're my people too. I'm sure. Yes, of it. No, she is totally. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So for me, I mean, I guess like our sexual conquest and everything is a little bit like it's a bit of different path. Um, for me, I would say it was like around 25 or 26 when I finally was like, okay, hold up. Something's got to change here. Like this is not the kind of sex that I want to be having. Like, and I just, I started like openly talking about it yes. and some guys that threw them off and some guys would be like, Oh, like you're this, you're that. I'm like, what's wrong with talking about sex? I saw this beautiful thing about shame and sexual shame and all of that. And sex is meant to be private. What you do, like having sex is meant to be private and whatever, but talking about it doesn't have to be. Yeah. Like that's, that's where the disconnect is, is people connect the act of having sex and the act of talking about it as one in the same, but they're not. Yeah. Can, do yeah. you agree with that? I completely agree with that. I mean, I think it's crazy. Like even for me, like I can talk super openly to like strangers about mm -hmm. all the things that I've done. And yet, like, I still, like, have to be like, no, I like it, like, better like that. Or, like, can we please, like, I still am working on communicating in the bedroom and then mm -hmm. before or after just in terms of, like, hey, what do, you, what do you like? Like, just really, like, it's, mm -hmm. even for me, it's still, like, something that I have to con consciously be practicing to, like, yeah. really talk about it. Yeah, um, there is, like, and, and I was always really nervous because girls are, you know, or women are scared to hurt feelings and when I started just having the mentality is there's no room for fucking hurt feelings in the bedroom I just started saying things and even while having sex like it's not like I'm interrupting what they're doing I'm like giving tips and I'm doing it and like trying to do it in like a sexy way or whatever right like I'm not being like no stop it that's awful it's like oh try this try that you know or um do this like I, I, I just think they're not yeah, used to it they're not, but I've yet to have a guy who was like not receptive. Like maybe he That's wasn't true. listening. Like he, he wouldn't do it, but he didn't get mad by any means. Um, I love exit interviews too. I think, I think sex exit interviews are the best. So how is that? What could be better? Where could you do improvement? What was your favorite yes. part? Yes. Yeah, see, and that's when like, I'm like, get the fuck out of my house. Yeah. Fair so, enough. And then you wonder what I'm still um, single. So, you know, anyways. Yeah. Hey, but so am I. I actually, um, so I posted that thing today or was it yesterday? I don't know when I was like, ask me anything. Yeah. And this one guy was like, why are you having, like, you seem rad as shit. You're hot. Why are you having so much trouble finding a man? I was like, well, I wouldn't say I'm having any trouble. I'm not like actively trying, but like I have certain standards for myself. And if someone isn't like totally obsessed with me, deuces, like, I don't know. Yeah. And I, I know I'm rad as shit. Like I, I know my value and that might come off as cocky. Like people are going to be like, Oh my God, listen to her. There's nothing wrong with fucking being obsessed with yourself. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I'm my biggest cheerleader. No one else is going to cheer for me, but me. Right. So. Right. And I mean, I think especially during this like pandemic, I mean, I've been like alone by myself. And so I'm like, like whoever is going to bring, like, I'm good at being alone. Like I've been here. Alone yeah, me too. Years. So like, you better really bring something that's going to make my life better. And like, or I really don't want it. I'd rather like chill with my plants and my cat. Yeah. Yeah. Right For up. me to take energy away from myself or my daughter, you gotta be worth it. Like I'm done with putting an effort to guys who don't fucking deserve the effort. Right. Yeah. Um, Oh, we're getting the, oh, you're with the wrong dudes comment. Yeah, I know. That's we, real. You know, yeah, hey, probably, probably, absolutely, I'm with the wrong guy. Because if I was with the right guy, then I, we would be single, right? <laughs> yeah. But They're I all say, wrong. I say that, like, I feel like that's just, like, another journey, too. Like, because, I mean, my ex-boyfriend from high school is, like, cheating on me all the whole time in games, like, doing drugs, like, just bad, bad, bad. I mean, like, I've been hurt. We've all been hurt, you know? And, like, yeah. the 
I recently had a boyfriend in Brazil like two years ago who was like super obsessed with me. And it was the first time where like I wasn't worried about other women and he was such a good guy. And one, and it was like the first time though at age 32 to experience that. Um, mm -hmm. And it was amazing. And so that we have to keep reminding ourselves that like that's what we, that's what we deserve and that's what we are want. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, you got to stand up for, for what you want. Um, just a reminder, everyone, if you want to enter the draw, make sure you like Sex During Corona, uh, Ask Mama B and Tracy's dog, and then go comment, um, go answer the question in my story, and uh, you'll get entered in for a Tracy's dog OG sex toy. It's like the sex toy of the, the year, so you definitely have to check that out. Um, sorry, I'm just going to getting blown up here anyways there we go so yeah so um i have the dating thing because dating's boring let's talk about sex um okay. i want to know what's your favorite thing to do during sex like what's your favorite thing sexually um oh, man. i don't know the blowjob thing still is just like there's something I that i just like Cause it's so fun and you can just like do so many things and like, yeah, it's just, there's like so the much girl. potential. Well, it's because we really like penis. And if you don't really like penis, then like, you're not going to yeah. be into it. But like for me, I'm just like this fucking beautiful things yeah. in my hand and like doing, doing all the things like to me, that shit, like, like I will get like wet. Like I've come actually. Yeah. Not oh, many times, soaked. But I have soaked. come straight come just from sucking yeah. dick. And I'm like, wait, I get like yeah. pounded from the back of all these different positions and I don't come. But like getting like giving like head for a while like that shit makes me wet as fuck, like wet. wet yeah, wet. no, and well, so for me it's like it's this it's this intertwining of being submissive and dominant at the same yes. time, right? I agree. We're submissive in the sense of like we're you know either on our knees or whatever, and like you know he can choke us with it, whatever. But we're also dominant because like we got his dick in our mouth, you know, and yeah, like or, yeah. we're running show as well. Um, and then when you're good at it too, there's something about that cockiness, right? Where oh you're like, no, because they're like, oh my God, I've been thinking that was the best. I mean, just all this shit. And you're like, yeah, you know yeah, it. Yeah, you're like, yeah. You're like, yeah. that was not even my A game, okay? That was like, yeah, just, absolutely that was just not. for kicks. <laughs> the best is, oh, I never come off head. Okay, yeah, let's see. <laughs> yeah, I know. I love that. And I'm like, okay. No, literally, Challenging? I'm like, you're not coming. Like we're not, you're not coming from sex. Like, hold on a second, dude. Like, challenge accepted. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Um. Yeah. yeah I, no. No. It's it's fun. I'm trying to think what else. I mean. I mean, you know what? Just like pay attention to our bodies. Like, uh, just try a little yeah. bit. Like, because I feel like like I love to get just like just to get like fucked, but like without even coming. Sometimes, like, I'm okay with that. Because yes. I just like getting dick. Like I totally Thank you. Can okay. we talk about having sex without coming? Let's talk about that. Because okay. I get those comments a lot where women are like, I can't come during sex or I can only come from this position or da 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 da. And I keep trying to tell people that it's not all about the orgasm. Not at we all. We need to stop focusing on the orgasm because I can enjoy sex and it can feel really good and still not orgasm. I most of the time when I squirt, I don't even orgasm. So like it's exciting for them. Oh, they made me squirt. Maybe I didn't come, but at least I squirted or like whatever. We're going to have to talk about that in a second, but go ahead. Sure. We will. But the, the whole like leading up, like it, it's, it's, it's not the end game. Like the, the orgasm is so far at the end when you're focusing too much on it, it's never going to happen. I was and you're just going to say that you need to just focus on being in the moment and enjoying yeah. the feelings and the touching and the this and the that that's good sessions. Like those are good sessions when like you're just aroused, like you're peaking and you're edging like the whole fucking time without anything even fucking happening. I love No, that And shit. I will say, cause there was like so many times where I got frustrated because I was like, dude, I'm getting like this really big dick in me. Like, you know, all of these things. And like, I can't come. And even like, if I'm trying to rub it or he's trying to rub it, I still don't cut. Like what the fuck? And because I realized, like, I was thinking so much about it. And, like, people don't realize how much, like, our mental, like, mental and physical is so related. Do you know what I mean? Like, so related. And so, so related. once I, like, was, like, okay, like, don't try to come. Because the more I thought about, like, you know, what's going to come? Or try, thinking about, like, other sexy things in my head about other people, you know, whatever. Yeah, like, no. And when you let it go, like, you can, you're like, whoa, that was cool. 
Um, but yes. I also think one of my favorite is like, if guys know what to do with their hands, even yeah. just their hands, they don't even have to go down on me, but they can like rub the clit and like get me all wet and like make me come just from doing that. And then I'm, I'm like, good with ready that. To go. Like ready. See, yeah, I'm too. good with that. And like, I tell guys, like guys who message me about having like a really, like a small dick, right? They're like, what am I going to do? I'm like, the best experience I've had is from a man's hand. A man made me cry. My, the orgasm this man gave me made me cry from his hand. There was no yes. dick involved at all whatsoever. Um, no, another true. thing, guys, and it's with hands again, is you have to remember there's a lot of different pressure points on a woman. Um, I have found that like a really big spot for me is right like on my hip bones. <gasps> pressure on my hip bones is fucking amazing. Pressure on my ribs. Like if he's like grabbing me on my like around my ribs or whatever, like you just see me do it to myself. Like there's certain pressure yeah, points on like, a woman. I know, right? <laughs> but like, those are things that you can keep in mind. Like if you're eating a girl out, you fucking put the, your thumbs just right yes. into her hip bones and start like massaging on her hip bones. Like, oh, yes. I'll take that all fucking day over sex. Yes. Like, I'm not kidding you. Like, give no, me a me body too. massage, like all day, every day. Um, um, I had a girl, I had a girl that, message. Like, me. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. Go ahead. No, shut no, up. No, I was just going to say that that's, like, one of the fucking, like, best orgasms I've ever had is, like, it's happened. I, like, have really ran random weird good luck. Um, one time in Puerto Rico, one time in Rio, and then recently here, yeah. actually, um, where, like, it was a massage, like, an actual professional massage that turned into a happy ending. And, like, let me tell you, when you are having, especially when they're attractive, person like massage your whole body for like an hour and then slowly like I mean talk yeah. about coming quick like yeah. that shit like they literally touch my clit and it's like over so you can do that even if it's not done well that's yeah. so funny that you say that because like I'm totally I've been um promoting massage porn for like the last month it's Dude, my new favorite thing it. after ever since this recent one I've been watching it and I'm just like yo this shit is hot man it's so fucking hot because it's so subtle like it's not crazy she just lays down she gets oiled the shit up gets rubbed down and, and then all like, of a sudden his thumb slips in there and it's like oh <laughs> yes girl, i feel the same way <laughs> yeah i'm Amazing. all about the massage porn yeah and it, yeah it's great i love it it's the best for sure well, and then he jumps up on the table standard thing which you know we could talk about for years too like yeah. you know men have to go to happy endings like i mean like these happy endings Why that just come that? upon me without me trying were like amazing. Like we can totally yeah. get those. Like fuck yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I could not agree with you more. Yeah. No, I'm down for that. I wish there was more of those around here. But Zeal. Definitely. Okay. So Zeal, Zeal is like, it's an app for at home massages and you can like read about the people and you can like pick how they look. And so like I picked this like hot tatted dude and the first time it was just a professional massage like a few months ago. And then the second time, like he like I was naked and he kind of was like is this okay and I was like yeah and, I, and then it happened so go on zeal maybe you'll get lucky <laughs> maybe <laughs> yes. text text me that okay <laughs> yes I will oh <laughs> uh, yeah no I'm uh now that like restrictions are coming down I've been like booking all my points I got my Botox done today which I'm so happy about I've been like two months without Botox I'm just like dying and I got my hair appointment I got a massage coming up I have nails like everything because now it's like everything's slowly opening up so I can actually like get in to get these things done. do it up I just like buy di fake diamonds on Amazon and do my own and let my wrinkles just be what they are because good for you fun. good yeah. for you um reminder anyone that's new if you want to enter to win the og tracy's dog toy you have to follow both mariah at uh sexy sex during corona and then myself and then follow tracy's dog and then go to my story and there's a question there and all you have to respond is done and i'll be doing the draw tonight so um get in on it because it'll be a good <laughs> good toy yeah um what is your favorite toy right now what's the brand um, it's, uh, my secret affair. Mm. Oh, I don't have it with me, but it's like the purple one. That's that like, you yeah, can go here. Inside. yeah. Hold on. I actually, I should there. go grab. Well, I've got my, it's, it's the same thing as the Tracy's dog. It's the exact same idea. Oh, so. I have some really wild ones. Hold on. Okay. I'm getting the whole box here. 
We're going to we're going to show off everything. Why not, right? Okay. All right. All right. Sorry guys. I just wanted to get I might I brought a whole box or like partial of my drawer here. Yes, yeah, same. I got some. <laughs> I like Look at this shit. Saturday night. It was exciting. Okay, so this is, by the way, un, unopened. This is the one that we're going to be giving away. So this is this is what the Tracy's dog looks like. Which is what mine, it's the same pretty much. It's just it's the a same. different yeah. brand. Yeah, it's hella yeah, good absolutely. because it has like a million, a million speeds this way and here, and it's just great. Yeah. Fabulous. Yeah, this is good. I'm going to see if we can get this. Um, can I show yeah. you what I can? Yeah. It's really loud. I always think my neighbor can hear me when I'm like random hours of the day. <laughs> oh, I don't even like, care. I'm like, I hope no, you can hear me. Good luck. I don't care either. Yeah, there's all sorts of fun toys here. This is my, I, this toy here. So it is called the uh, Wall Banger Beaver Deluxe. And one of my followers slash friends was like, you need to try this toy. It's battery operated, which I'm not a fan of, but like, I, I know have, was, we were talking about this the other day on live and she was saying that it's like goes too fast that it's like scary to her clip. It's fucking insane. Like you, I put this all the way, I put this in and then with this and it's just like, I've never came like that ever. In my what life. about this one? That's like double, double, like, I guess, you know, you could get another oh. chicken really. I don't know where I even got this. I Two way dildo. Friend, like, yeah. I don't even know yeah. what it is. This is my this is my OG like this one this one's really good it's it looks very similar to the Balesa but yeah, I, I got it on that. Amazon and I I love this one this one's really good um, but of course Bombex clit sucker so this is like this is my like this is the one that I promote and I've loved this forever yeah I mainly don't because of the size I don't even use this part yeah so I just use the top part just use that um, yeah I just guys, love though. the Can size I do one for the guys right here so. When I okay. ordered this, it came with this. It came with this like yeah, stroker. It's yeah, and like I've totally had guys use it. I'm like, can you just try this? And they're like, what? And I'm like, just try it. And I've totally like fingered it before, like because I like pussy too. So sometimes I'll like finger it while I'm like, yeah. doing other things and get into it. Um, so I had ordered one as well. A friend of mine who did some toy review, like male toy reviews. Um, I should actually like you should he's also a writer so he he like wrote out his review for me and it was the most beautiful review about this fucking stroker but he said it was like amazing it like changed his game for like mastering because like your hand you just get so used to right yeah I know. so he said it was like a really good change was the stroker so um yeah guys if there's any guys in here who want to try something else try a stroker they're not expensive either they're like 14 bucks on pink cherry like they're not expensive at all that's cool also, can I just tell you a couple other masturbation tips real, real, real quick? Just that yeah, I learned. Of I, went, I went to this, um, what is her, uh, Sexual Essentials, I think is her Instagram. And I went to a, I paid $20 for a Zoom class, a masturbating Zoom class. Ooh. And I'll just give you a couple of the things. One of them was like, use your other hand. Like, don't always use your same hand. It's weird. It's weird. And it feels like a whole other person. Like, okay. using the mirror, mirror reflecting in the mirror. Yeah. Um, and then obviously edging, which like I've never really I heard edging. about, but edging is the shit. It's a game It's changer. so good. And but, try different positions too. That's the other, that like was everyone, the other. like, yeah, yeah. Like I tried masturbating, like kind of on all fours, like lean I forward in the bed. Too. Like that was fucking awesome. Um, sitting up too, like almost in the lotus yeah. position, like with yeah. your legs like this, that was, that's really fun as well. Well, and um, I'm of, actually thinking, I'm actually thinking of doing a blowjob Zoom class. Yes, I want to join. I got some, yes, let's, you should do that. Yeah, yeah, well, I also, really, I was thinking of doing something like that. No, go. No, no, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that the, your brain, the way you, the way you have orgasms is like memories in your brain, like it stays in your brain. So if you're always coming just in the same position in the same way, then like that's the only way you're going to be able to come. So you have to do all the things you're saying. See, you I've tried the with the other hand though. I can't because so how, where am I like with where my clit is best stimulated? I have to use this hand because I kind of, it, it goes on that side of my clit kind of like if I go on the other side, like I, it, I, it's nothing pretty much for me. So like, 
I don't really know how to explain it, but like I have to use this hand because that's where I hold the vibrator. I've tried using this hand and I can't find the spot. What about with if you're hand. just using your hands? Just think, I don't, I don't, um, I, I honestly, like I rarely do, like myself, I usually only do clip stem or um, combination. I, I don't ever do just penetration. Yeah, I mean, no, I always I'm have to have some sort of stem. clip stem. Yeah. yeah. I have to have both. I remember like the best is my favorite is these two together. So this yes. with this and I'm just like, oh. but it's hard because you're like two hand in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, you're like, oh. And then like you're trying to watch your porn as well. And you're just like, <laughs> like. <laughs> okay, so what kind of porn do you watch? Um, I honestly watch a variety of shit. Like it's if I need like a quick go to, I've got this one girl, um, she's amateur and she's just, I, um, fuck, what is, what's the name? It's on, um, red tube. Anyways, she's just got this big juicy ass and she just goes like into splits. You don't see her face, just a big dick on her, but she gets like so fucking wet and she's got that like grippy pussy. So like it pulls out and like, it's really creamy. I just love it. I love it. It's good. It's a good go-to, but, um, I really do enjoy, um, like I said, the massage porn is really good. DP. I love watching DP, like, love just, like that three, shit. like love two in a pussy, shit. one in an ass. Yes. Let's get it going. Yes. Um, I do really enjoy a very passable, like trans woman with a girl. But like it, ha it has to be possible. I'm, and that's, I'm sorry if I'm not. This is my. I need the visual. Like I like the idea. Like that. Uh, f um, Faturi, f Faturi, like the cartoon, like the Anna, like the 3D shit. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah. yeah so yeah, like so where they have like, like girls with dicks fucking other girls. I like shit like that. That to me is like super sexy. Um, and like I do. Um, I do like the like older guys like way older guys with like girls like guys in their like 50s to like 60s um with like 20 year olds interesting daddy issues yeah, right are my no i mean i have daddy issues too but i don't i did it i turned it i did it in a you know a whole other way yeah um, that's interesting yeah i mean that's the thing we all have such different perspectives and it's totally okay and different like interests and things that turn us on yeah yeah sorry jennifer just had um I would love a blowjob Zoom class. I only know what I know. Uh, porn is not helpful. I mean fun, but not getting. Oh, she wants to know more about blowjobs. Yeah, absolutely. I, I did actually do a nine-minute tutorial on blowjobs. That's what I, like, made my OnlyFans account for. Like, that's really all I did on it was just to, like, oh, post this. Oh, you have OnlyFans. I do have OnlyFans. I don't use it. Like, I don't do anything on it. I did, like, I posted, like, a couple ass shots just to make some money after Christmas. <laughs> um, and, and then I... Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I think I made like six, 700 bucks. It wasn't anything crazy, but like, it was just some extra cash. Um, but the, the blowjob video, I didn't charge for it. Like my account's free. Anyone can sign up for it. There's nothing like, there's no subscription. I just wanted somewhere that I could put a blowjob tutorial without getting it taken down. Cause I had TikTok and Instagram. Now it's, it wasn't me like full on giving a blowjob. It was tips. I had a dildo. I showed some hand yeah. motions, but I wasn't like giving yeah. a blowjob by any means. Um, I was just kind of explaining my tips and tricks. But with my new job, I just didn't really want that on the internet because of the kind of job that I do. Um, and I actually can't have an OnlyFans. Like, I can't have an active, like, I have any porn sites in my job. There's, like, a moral clause, which I know is against everything that I do. But, you guys, mama's got to pay the bills. So I got a job. <laughs> no, I mean, this goes totally the opposite in some way of what my job is. So I feel you. I mean, my job is like working with teenagers teenage girls about like empowerment but yeah not this level not this level yeah <laughs> that's fair yeah that's fair so yeah so I that's why I think I was like I thought like the idea of doing like a zoom class where like you know they come they sign that they don't won't record you know it's kind of more one-on-one yeah. -on -one. so so yeah I, it is in the works everyone it's it is in the works um now you had earlier earlier um, mentioned about the stigmas around STIs and that and whatnot. I actually had somebody message me today um, when I did the like ask me a question, and she asked like, "Hey, are you going to talk about the stigmas and all this and all that?" Um, I also had another lady um, ask me about. She was like, "I don't know how to tell my man that I that my new boyfriend that I or like or she goes, I'm, I'm recently divorced and I don't know how to tell like a new partner that I have HPV.'" And I was like, "Oh, girl, everyone and their fucking everyone dog has." HPV. 
And she's like, well, how do I tell him? I was like, even if you did give it to him, he's not going to fucking know. Not to, not to tell him, but I mean, like, he's not going to have any symptoms. So, like, he doesn't fucking care. Like, it's not going to affect him in any way. It affects women more than it affects men. Yeah. I mean, so, like, I mean, don't, having the conversation, like, it's it's just HPV. Everyone fucking has it. Just say, hey, I've got HPV. Like, everyone I mean, fucking has it. I don't even, okay, so I've taught sex ed. I've taught sex ed in, like, comprehensive sex education in LA, Puerto Rico, and in Brazil. Um, so I know like all about all the STIs, about all the birth control methods, like all of that stuff. Like I've had chlamydia three times. I have HPV. I have herpes. I got herpes when I was like 20. Thought my life was going to end. Nobody was ever going to yeah. be with me. Yeah. be with me again. Nobody's ever going to marry me. Nobody's ever going to have sex with me, whatever. Yeah. My ex-boyfriend of nine years never had an outbreak. My ex-boyfriend of one year never had an outbreak. Obviously they carry it. The yeah. chance of, I mean, I could go off, but like just a quick little over. I mean, one in four women, one in five men. 80% of people don't know they have it. I always joke that it's like Corona, like people just have it and they don't know they have it and they're just spreading it around. Yeah. Um, and it's like the stigma is really bad around herpes specifically. And like, you know, and yeah. it's really like everybody, re everybody reacts super differently. So to some people, it's like a really big deal. Um, I haven't had an outbreak in 10 years. I forget yeah. I even have it. You know what I mean? And I don't tell every guy everything all the time. And yeah. maybe I should, but I also am like, if you're not like, if if there's any sort of connect like if we're just gonna spend any time together i tell them and every single person except for like one was totally fine with it one person just said i need to like edu educate me a little bit more about it so i like sent them articles and whatever mm -hmm. but it's really just the stigma because like think of i mean so i mean one time i told all my girlfriends because i'd slept with them two two out of the three and they were like yeah we have herpes too like it's such a stigma thing and it's just like it's so just like part of having sex you can have the sex herpes one, one is get it. yeah the herpes one is really crazy because um the thing is is like you said one in four but those are reported cases that's not even that's not not reported right, right. so you think about everyone that's passing around yeah i have girlfriends who had it one time 15 years ago and have never had another outbreak again like ever never even seen right. anything again is, so you like, could you could have had you could have had an outbreak and not even really realized it like she said all she had was like a little like little lesion one lesion that was it that's all she fucking had a little bit of a cold and that was it she was like if i didn't because she got tested regularly because she was having like so much like a lot of sex um so she would get tested regularly she was if i didn't like get tested and find out i would never have known that that was herpes but see, but they don't even test for it. Like when I, I got recently tested for everything, they don't test for herpes when you go in. They test for chlamydia, gonorrhea, trick, HPV, HIV. But you, you can ask it, B. but you can ask. You can, but the, they're antibody blood tests and they don't really say anything. So that shows that maybe you were exposed to it. The only way to really know is if you have a lesion. However, right. the issue is, is women's bodies, by the way we're designed, is like a moist, wet vagina. So bacteria and all the things grow in there a lot more. And so men are passing it around and we're the ones who are dealing with the repercussions. I mean, chlamydia, we can become infertile. Okay. Yeah. Gonorrhea, we can become infertile. Doesn't men, I didn't have symptoms when I had chlamydia. I just got tested and like found out I had it. Um, but like the chance, for example, with herpes, like if you're taking antivirals every day, the chance of a woman passing it to man is like 4% or something, or 1%, 1%. Without yeah. antivirals, it's like 4%. And yeah. so if I have sex with one guy one time with the condom or even without, the chance is tiny. And mm -hmm. you don't ever know where you got it from most of the time. No. Because it can be dormant for so many years. Like, yeah. I mean, I could go off on this stuff because it's just Yeah, like, no, I know. We're, no, and we will because um, I was – and now that I know that you are this knowledgeable because I – my response to her was, what, yes, I've been doing research and I want to, but I want to someone that's knowledgeable. So we'll, we'll, we'll save that for another one because, yeah. yeah, it could go on. But, again, it's all about these sexual stigmas, which is, is really where we're – you know, we'll come back around to is that there are so many sexual stigmas – um, around everything and more so around women than men. And that is just facts. Now I did see a wonderful article though, about how there are stigmas that men seem to have to, you know, adhere, adhere to, right. You know, that all men are horny and all men are this and, and that's not true either. So I just, yes. for my men that are out there right now, I'm not a feminist man hating woman by any means. And I know that you guys have your stigmas too. And I know there's things, you know, cause there are some men who aren't super horny and that's just who they are. 
are or they don't want to go and have sex. So to have those kind of pressures on them isn't always fair either. So um, again, I'm not here to hate on men, but obviously who I am and what I talk about is definitely more female oriented. So I just wanted to say that, that we recognize you guys. We recognize that you guys have your own struggles as well. But women as a whole have been oppressed for a very long time and our sexuality, like our entire worth has been around our virginity and our this purity culture that has been around for centuries and having our value compared to that is damaging because at such to have that pushed on you at such a young age such an impressionable age it fucking carries on with you for the rest of your life so yes. um i just wanted to like say that real no fast, i appreciate but. that That's super important super super yeah important. yeah you I, bet. I just will say that like just which I think you've said, it's just like the range. Like some of us lose our virginity when we're 12 or 13. Some of us, the average is seven, pe like penis and vagina sex is 17.3 years for women and 17 years old for men. So it's range. And 20% 20, 20 of people graduate college without having sex. So one in five people wow. graduate college as a virgin. So, and they feel a lot of shame around that because, yeah. You know, um, so there's so many like there's such a range in all of it. And I just think that's like super important to just like keep reminding ourselves that we all have super different relationships with this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I think even at this age, like I, that's what I love so much about my page and where it's come, like where it's gone is these these messages from women who are like. 40 years old, fresh out of a divorce or whatever. And they're now like saying fuck it and finding themselves and using the information I provide them or where they find somewhere else and are finally like putting that shit aside and like trying to get the confidence back because, you know, we've been set up to fail right from day one. How do they expect us to be confident and love ourselves and love our sexuality and be focused on what we want and know what we want because we've only been told what the men want. Yeah. What we want has never fucking mattered. Yeah. And yeah. until, so until in so many ways, until we start saying like, no, it does fucking matter. My feelings matter. My everything matters. Then it's not going to change. So we all need to start doing it. And it's as simple as just telling a guy what you want in the bedroom. That is a good place to start is if something doesn't feel good, say it doesn't feel good. Stop taking it. But yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, I want to talk a little bit about when you like, I know you said that you've always like been empowered sexually, but like, when did it really like resonate with you that you were like, I feel powerful. Not that you just didn't care, like not the not caring thing, but like really being like, you found yourself sexually. Like you were finally like having the good sex again. Like what was the like, turning point for you what where was your mindset at what was life like like where were you um I don't think for me it was like that honestly yeah. I think it's been really like up and down in a way of like yeah. some good time in a serious relationship it was really, I felt really empowered sometimes with these random guys I feel really empowered there wasn't mm -hmm. something that's clicked for me like it's kind of just been like yeah. a consistent like exploratory thing of just like learning and with each person it's different and um and myself, like learning my own body more. I mean, so I think it's just like a process, you know, and like yeah. a journey. And for me, yeah. there wasn't like something that happened or one day where I was like, okay, not at all. Yeah, no, absolutely. What's something that you don't do in the bedroom? Like, what is your for sure no go? I mean, I don't love anal sex. Yeah. At all. I mean, okay, I have enjoyed it, um, but it, it takes like a lot of relaxation lube mm -hmm. maybe alcohol like to be honest like i just like i i'm not opposed to it but I'm, it's not my go-to not your go-to what yeah, about you um well i don't do do like any scat like the poop stuff i don't do that but oh, see, yeah, i love it yeah, no, I won't do that. But I love anal. I wish anal was something I could have more consistently. But like there's anal prep that is required to have anal. Like yeah. anal is not something you should do spontaneously at all. Ever. I've only done uh, it spontaneously. So maybe wow. that's why I'm like. Good for you. Yeah, see, I, I would be too nervous about that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I love anal. I um, I don't like anything degrading. Like I can't, I can do submissive shit, like Dom sub stuff, but like, I don't want to be degraded. I don't like being talked down to really badly. Like no, I like being called like a little slut, but like, 
you know, you dirty little whore. Like that would be like a little too much. Or like, you know, this one guy was like, I was doggy style, like face down. He tried to put his like foot on my head, like while he was like pile driving me basically. And I was like, nah, you don't need to be doing all that. Um, I had one guy who just straight up slapped me in the face. Like, and I was like, whoa. And I ended up punching. I, I, so I'm, I'm, I'm a scrapper. I was, well, not anymore, but like in my twenties, like I was a bit of a scrapper. So like, I have this like reaction that you hit me in the face. Yeah. I hit back. So like this man smacked me and I just fucking clocked him in the chin. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's your fucking natural instinct. Like what the fuck? Like, this yeah. Is, or, yeah, no. And yeah. That's one basic one is like, don't push our heads down when we're giving you head. Like that one. I mean, I think hopefully I haven't had grown men really do that recently, but that one was such a thing. And I was just like, yo, it's like, like I know what I'm doing. Can you like, fuck stop. the fuck off? Like, um, I did a video. One of my, actually, one of my videos that did like that when I did videos on TikTok, um, I, that was what I, I was like, okay, we're gonna talk about blowjobs here. But I said, disclaimer, I was like, putting your hand and pushing your, a woman's head down on your dick is a form of dominance and requires consent. Like yeah. you don't just get to push, like you are stopping someone from fucking breathing. Okay. So like, you don't get to control that. If I put your hand on my head, then yes. But like, let me do it. Don't worry. That dick's going to go down my throat. I promise you that you don't need to force it down. It's fucking No, it makes shitty. me want to like get up and leave. Honestly, I, I hate it. I fucking yeah. hate it. It's, it's annoying as fuck. Um, again, you are literally trying, you are stopping someone from breathing if you want that to happen, have the conversation prior. Like, hey, like we should try this out. Communicate that though. You don't go and force like the amount of girls. Like I did also a video like asking, hey, why don't you like giving head? If you're a girl, like all these guys tell me that no girls give head. Tell me why you don't like it. And a lot of it was they, these girls had bad experiences of guys like making them choke or making them throw up on their dicks. Like no girl wants to fucking do that. Like it's seriously. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's... I love giving head back to that. <laughs> my nickname in high school was Deep Throat. My uh, party awesome. trick at... My, my party trick at uh, parties was Deep Throwing Bananas. If any of my friends from high school are on here, they would totally vouch for that. But yeah. yeah, I mean, I've done the beer bottles and all the things, you know, for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, God, yeah. so much fun, hey? So much um, just a reminder, if anyone's new and you want to try to win this toy tonight, this is what I'm giving away. Not this one. This one's mine. You don't get this one. Um, <laughs> you just have to follow me. You have to follow Mariah at Sex During Corona. And then you also have to follow Tracy's dog. Uh, and then go to my story and type in done in the question section and you will be entered in to win this tonight so i've got a brand spanking new one right here that's burning a hole in my pocket that i want to send to somebody so make sure you enter in because uh it's an awesome toy um again anyone that's just popped on happy women's day um we are talking sexual empowerment so um if anyone wants to ask some questions we'll we've got 15 minutes left here we'll keep talking but you guys can go ahead and ask some questions to either mariah or i or both of us um we will definitely answer those no problem so um let's talk a little bit about sex during corona for you so okay. what have you been up to like what are, are you able like you're a single woman I know you've been saying that like it's been difficult and you're in South Beach you said I'm in Hollywood Florida between Miami and Fort Lauderdale so South oh okay okay so tell me like what's going on with you sex so wise. well it started I was in Re I was in Brazil like a year ago at carnival like with thousands of yeah. people having no really good times I'm sure you can imagine <laughs> yeah um and then I came back and I was quarantined and all the authorities and everybody medical professional everybody's saying that single people you can't have sex and I was like what the fuck they were this saying like, that no I was I, every like no all the news articles was just like oh know, yeah 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 Toronto, like you can't have sex with anybody and so I was like yeah this is bullshit so I started this Instagram called Sex and Corona to like try to navigate like single people who like me are like used to hookup culture, like people like having one night stands and all this stuff. And like, what do we do now? Do you know what yeah. I mean? So like, I go through like all this, all the stages of like, you know, masturbating and all the things, dating apps, uh, Zoom and video dates, social distance dates, you know, like yeah. all the ghosting that happens, all the uh, deal breaker questions, all the pickup lines, all the 
you know, like all the things, dating profiles, all the things. Um, yeah. And, you know, and I didn't have sex for a really long time. And it was, it was a new experience for me. Um, and, you know, I have had sex obviously since, but it's definitely, yeah. you know, like having to ask somebody, are you a frontline worker? Do you live with your grandparents? Um, are you out? I mean, Florida's open. So, are, you know, some of these people are out partying every night. They're probably not the ones I'm going to hook up with. Maybe getting yeah. to know somebody a little bit more before you start to hook up with them. Like there's mm -hmm. so much that um, is real for single people during this time. Yeah. Um, yeah. And people it's thinking tough. maybe you're going to find the love of your life because like you have to get to know people more and all of this stuff. So anyways. yeah, maybe um, yeah. someone asked six foot smile asked, what makes you decide to date versus just fuck a guy after the first time? Mm. If he calls me back. Maybe he'll get yeah. <laughs> if I call him back. Um, if we call him back. I don't know. Um, I don't know if you like hanging out with each other. Yeah. Like for me, like if it was just one sex one time, but like it seemed like maybe there's like a cool vibe. Like I'm down to do it again. It's not like I only want to have one night stand. I'm 35. I actually like want more than that. Like way yeah. more than that. But yeah, it's just absolutely. like both of us having to like both of us having to put a little effort because I will tell you. That was the biggest problem that I think, especially here in South Florida, but everywhere, there's too many options, too many dating no apps, too many things. No, nobody puts any effort to actually get to know somebody. It's just like you match, you talk for a day, for a week, maybe really like each other for a month, and then people just go on to the next. Like nobody yeah. puts any actual effort in and getting to know somebody. And it's so no. sad, honestly. And I hate putting the effort in to get to know someone for them to just fucking disappear. Exactly. Or like fade away. And it's like, come on. Like get real here. Um, it, it annoys me. I'm just so done with this dating culture. I was like, it's I horrible. gave, a, yeah, I gave a guy a shot and I went for like, totally not my usual go to like went very different demo. Your girly side came out is what you're saying? No, no. I, he was like more like the nerdy side. Like oh, I, he was, yeah. So he was more um, on the nerdy side of things. And I was like, yeah, you know, like he's good looking, whatever. <clears throat> Everything was going good. And then I go over to his place and he had some friends over to like play some board games, which like I was all down for. And he, he shows up, or he, or he answers the door in red plaid pajama pants with like a red Under Armour shirt. And the whole time he's like out loud burping and farting the whole time. And I was just like, yeah. you're like a man boy. Okay, but like, see, here's a question. Do you think we cut guys off too quickly? Maybe sometimes too? I mean, that is like not cute, but. I know. Yeah, I fuck, I got high standards, girl. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I can't get down with the, the red plaid pajama pants and the farting, like the lifting the ass cheek farting. No, 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 no. I also think that I was more interested in the fact that he was just nice to me. I'm so used to guys not being nice to me that he was just nice to me. And I was like, Oh, you're being nice to me. Okay. Maybe I like you. Um, okay. Claudia asked, is there such thing as sex addiction wanting to be um, with more than your spouse? Okay. So those are two very separate things. Yes. Being having a sex addiction and wanting to be with someone else separate situations um let's focus on sex addiction so you and i actually talked about this a little bit and when we had our one-on-one -on -one conversation um i am like i say like i'm addicted to sex am i really addicted no my problem is is if i get a taste of a little bit of sex i want it like i'm like a fucking crackhead where it's like i get a taste i need more i need more i need more like i can't like it, and it takes me a while to like mentally be like okay blair you're not gonna get some dick for a bit like you gotta chill the fuck out um, so that's where like I struggle, but then there's people where their entire lives, like a real sex addiction, it's like everything, like they will pass up on like important events, like everything is surrounded around sex. Right. It's, I mean, it's, it's, you know, like any other addiction, it's interfering with your personal relationship with your family, with your friends, with your yeah. job, your health, like those, that's when it becomes a real issue. Yeah. Now, do you have like, do you really, really like sex? Yeah. Like, yes. Yeah, yes. Is it actually an addiction? No. Like, I don't, I, I call mine a sex addiction, but just because it's so similar to the fact of like, see, I can go months. Like, I can go months without sex, but as soon as I get a little bit of D, I'm fucked. Like, that's it. That's why I tell these guys, I'm like, unless you can give me consistent, like, don't, don't even fuck me. Like, go the fuck away. We're not even getting involved in this. 
Um, now, as for wanting to be with more than just your spouse, that's just you wanting to be sexually ex like exploring. Like that's okay. Those kind of conversations you can have with your partner um, and open up about that. Now, is it you know? Do you want to do it with him? Do you want to do or her? Do you want to do it without them? Like how how does that want to look? Or how's that going to look? That's a conversation you need to have. I did a um, video, a nine minute video on. Uh, threesomes and how to engage in threesomes that would probably be a good place to start for wanting to be with someone else uh, in your relationship and then go from there so if you do want to get some information on that do you have any insight Mariah on wanting to be with someone else I mean else? I think I think that our culture most cultures you know monogamy is like a social construct and I don't think it is we're fully meant, we are fully meant to just be with one person however no, I, I mean, agree. even me who's used to being with lots of people I actually do just want to be with one person however I'm open to something that's a little bit different do I want to yeah. be in a swingers lifestyle all the time and sleeping with other couples probably not but I I think that it, it's natural and normal and human to be attracted to other people and it's just how you go about it the issue for me yeah. is the lying and the cheating like Yes. We are all going to be attracted to other people, but how do you talk with your partner about this? Like, hey, I'm feeling this type of way. What are we going to do together in the, about this? How do we deal with this? Maybe it is one night on a business trip. I don't know. But like Whatever. just the communication because the real issues come in when, when the trust and the lack of trust and honesty because we are humans and we are attracted to other people. So how yeah. do we deal with that with the person that you love? You yeah, know, you talk exactly. about it. You talk about yeah, it. Yeah, no, plans. I totally agree with you. And you know, this whole idea of like, oh, he thinks someone else is hot or, oh, I caught him looking at someone else or vice versa. It's like, yeah, just because I'm in a relationship with someone doesn't mean everyone else becomes non-attractive to me. Like, that's not a thing, right? Like, we're we're animals at the end of the day, right? Like, there there's an, an aspect of like, wanting to have sex like that's okay that's an okay feeling that doesn't mean you're a bad person doesn't mean your partner's a bad person um i think it's just again a conversation that needs to be had for sure right. or you try to spice it up in different ways there's other ways you know there's yeah. like lots of different things that you can be exploring for sure yeah yeah you bet you bet um okay so we're about to run out of time here yep um so i want to say big thank you to you thank this you was awesome. this is so fun and I want to do this again for okay. fucking sure. We'll do another topic. Um, remind everyone to follow Mariah at Sex During Corona. Um, if you want to follow or if you want to win the prize tonight, you have to follow both of us as well as Tracy's dog. Um, and then go to my story and answer done. And I'm going to be giving this away tonight. So uh, make sure you guys go do that. Um, happy Women's Day. Yes, this was the Seriously. perfect way to single ladies celebrate together. It couldn't have been a more perfect day to do this. So um, everyone, you have a good night. Be safe. Thank have you. fun. And you have a good night too, Mariah, right? Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Bye, you guys. Mwah.